boxing has the biggest dedication there is. It's the one sport that is up to you. Football, you have a team. Baseball, you have a team. Boxing, you can have the greatest trainer in the world. But if you don't got the heart, it doesn't help you. Heart is something you're born with. Take no steps backwards, no matter what. It's just boom, boom, boom. And now on the attack, look at this assault from Jose Ramirez. You see him getting knocked down and get up. You know it's all in the heart. This is what you get with Sinisa Estrada. When Mexicans go to a fight and see a Mexican-American fighter, pride, it doubles. Big left hand. When you got your whole country looking at you, it's not where you start, it's where you end. If you end with your hands up, then okay, that's that's what it's about. Dad, he never wanted to live his dreams through me. He was such a hard worker, um, just trying to provide a better life for us and, and for, my, for my mother. Otra vez. Otra vez. He wanted me and my brothers to use up our energy in something positive and always maintain ourselves. To be honest, man. I'm happy that you're using your brain, Papa. Mi padre, en paz descanse, él fue el que, el que me ayudó a, a, para agarrar yo el, el, el permiso de de aquí a Estados Unidos uh, para entrar legalmente al país en 1987. Mi vida aquí en Estados Unidos pues era trabajar, puro trabajar. Eh, en aquellos años uh, el trabajo que yo realizaba pues era un trabajo bien pesado. The gym opened up in Avenal in 1999, and he signed us up. You know, he signed, he signed me and my brothers up. Y el que se quedó fue José. José, él sí, sí le, sí le interesó más el deporte. My family, they never had a, a fighter, a boxer, and you know, in, in the family. Yo como padre de él, yo nunca creí que él iba a llegar hasta unos niveles tan altos, ¿verdad? Que se coronó campeón mundial. As far as my father not being so involved in the sport, it made it easier because I never had no pressure. I never had no pressure like, oh, I must do this, I must do that. He doesn't care about the money, he doesn't care about, he just cares about me, not the fighter. Viene. We grew up, all of our friends and, and everything, the same thing, you know, our parents worked the strawberry fields. So we would only see our parents late in the evening, once they get home from work, shower, and next day, same thing again. That was the routine. Era bien difícil trabajar ocho, nueve horas en el campo y luego en la tarde ir a entrenar niños. Tenía el interés en, en lograr tener un campeón. Y si lo logré, el primer campeón fue Roberto. El undefeated IBF Junior Lightweight Champion of the World introducing Roberto Grandpa Garcia. Families, the goal was just to get the check that weekend so they could have another week to, you know, have food on the table. We lived day by day. We lived in the present. You live very happy when you live day by day. You live very happy when you live in the present, in the moment. Ahorita ya hay una relación más, 
más personal con, con los García, con Eduardo, Roberto, todos, ¿verdad? Porque somos casi iguales, somos mexicanos y fuimos luchistas aquí en este país. Este, trabajamos en los trabajos duros para sacar a la familia adelante. That brings a lot of hunger to, to us growing up and seeing what our parents are doing to provide for the family. It brings us hunger to be something in life and uh, boxing is, is what we choose to do. I definitely would not be a fighter if I grew up any other place than East LA and, and where I grew up. It's a place that shaped me into the person that I am, shaped me into the fighter that I am. My dad was born in, in Tijuana, Mexico, and came here when he was seven years old. Didn't know an ounce of English. Moved to Boyle Heights, Aliso Village Projects, one of the worst places you can live. My first memory about being in America is probably that I seen green grass and there was a restroom flushing, you know, uh, had a roof over my head. My dad and his brothers and my grandma, they were living in a wooden shack in TJ. So when they came here and moved into the Liso Village projects in Boyle Heights, it was such a huge difference. They thought they hit the jackpot. I was like, are we rich now? Him coming here to America and moving into projects in the heart of Boyle Heights, drugs and gangs and violence just automatically consumed his life. I think about the time he was 10, he was already in a gang. By the time he was 12, 13, tried heroin for the first time. And after that, all his, whatever dreams or goals that he maybe did have when he was a kid kind of just went out the window. And that was his life. Yeah, I started uh, just out of way out of hand robberies, burglaries, selling, you know, getting arrested for uh, dealing. I mean, I had friends dying too, I would say five to six a year. Good friends, good friends that I walked the streets with day and night, and they were like brothers to me. Most of us never thought we would, you know, we'd always say, man, I hope I can make it to 21 so I can drink. So we're already drinking. We were like, shut up, man, we were already drinking, you know? I was very young when, when he was in prison. I didn't really realize how unstable my life was. But once I started boxing, it changed his life once I started boxing because he could no longer go back to doing the things that he was doing before, prison, drugs, uh, gangs. That was all over for him. He knew that he needed and wanted to be there to support me and my dreams. I've always loved boxing. My father and I, and my grandfathers, we always used to watch fights together. Maybe it was because there was a lot of Latinos and especially a lot of Mexicans that uh, were sort of representing and were obviously some great champions throughout history. I felt close with my dad and my grandfather when we got to watch these fights. It made me fall in love um, with the sport. When Latinos watch a fight, it's such a camaraderie, you know. No matter who you're for, it's the familia that's there. I got a bunch of guys, about 30 guys in my house that are like, all like family. When I was growing up boxing and the whole block would get together and watch fights on pay-per-view. When I mean the whole block, it's, I mean 30 families will get together in one front yard, you know, to watch it on a small TV. I started seeing it 
And I started telling my dad, hey dad, one day you ain't gonna have to work, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do the work. Yo estaba pensando que cuando José llegara a una edad de, de 12, 13 años, estaba yo pensando que él se iba a retirar del, del boxeo, porque él iba a conocer más deportes como el fútbol, como el béisbol, pero las cosas no fueron así. Throughout my whole life, I, I juggled so many things at once. I was always doing two, three sports at once. And, and school. And I would get mad at myself sometimes because I just, I, I couldn't let myself just be average. Well, I've seen Jose Ramirez since the amateurs. Since he was a, a younger kid before the Olympics, I went to Fresno to a amateur show where he was going to compete uh, just to see him fight because you always hear of that one talented fighter that's making noise through the amateurs and Jose was one. When I really told myself, okay, I was like, you might be really good at this. It was when I won my way all the way to nationals in the Junior Olympics as a 17-year-old. I was the first guy from Central Valley in the history to come back with the gold medal from the Junior Olympics. That, you know, that made me realize that I'm the best in the nation. And I was a senior in high school and I worked at Starbucks. So I was America's best boxing barista. I love Cinesia, she's a sweetheart. Close with her father and I love the, the, the bond they have and her, her journey throughout the sport and proud of her to see what she's accomplished. And she can, uh, she can whoop some ass in there. <laughs> One day I believe we were at the same gym and uh, we sparred a few rounds and it, was, uh, and it was a lot of fun and she took it easy on me. <laughs> <laughs> It was fun sparring with him. He's a huge boxing fan and is a very, very decent fighter. He's good. He's good. <laughs> he was saved by the bell. <laughs> I'm just kidding, Mario. Growing up, before I started sparring with boys, before I started boxing at all, my dad, he would always order the current pay-per-view fights that were on. When we started watching the boxing, you know what I mean? I used to call her my chicle, which means gum, because everywhere we went, she was like right here next to me. That's like when she started asking daddy to gross box. And I looked and I said, yeah, babe, they box, well, can I box? And I'm like, uh, yeah, of course you can box, you do whatever you want. I took her to a gym and I asked the guy, hey, uh, do you train kids? He says, yeah, of course. And I, oh, I have my daughter, she, she wants to box. He's like, uh, well, um, we uh, don't train girls. I don't train girls. I can see in the reflection, she's crying. I thought that was like my only hope. So he said, okay, I'm gonna take you to the heart of East LA where Hollenbeck Youth Center is. That youth center will take anybody. This is for low-income community. They took her in right away. But I still wasn't convinced. I didn't, I don't want my daughter boxing. This is my baby girl's very first time she sparred with someone. My dad wanted me to spar for the first time so I could get beat up and not want to come back to the gym again. And she rushes the guy and starts wailing on the kid. We did three rounds and, and after the third round he quit. He went back to his corner and he was crying. So uh, then we left and she's, you know, sweating. How you like it? She goes, yeah, you want to come back? She goes, yeah, I want to come back. I was like, ah, oh, crap. <laughs> I didn't care what it was going to take. I, I just, I wanted to fight. She has something in her. I felt, I, right away, I felt something in my heart. that said, you just give her a chance. Stick with her. And then, you know, she, she, this is her destiny. Ramirez, what does he have? Here's the clap. 
and lets loose right to the bell. Ladies and gentlemen, your winner by unanimous decision, Josh Taylor! It took me a lot of time for me to, to step out from my house, actually, you know. I was, I felt embarrassed with myself, you know, because every time I go into a fight, I'm not supposed to lose that fight. I owe it to myself, I owe it to my fans to fix those mistakes, you know. Um, so I have invested a lot in my recovery. I have invested a lot in my nutrition, the way I eat. Um, how early I start with my training camps, um, my lifestyle overall. You learn as you go through your experiences, you, you attempt to understand your body more. Right now I feel young, you know, like I'm at prime. Um, not too bad? Not too bad. So here we have different types of vitamins through the IV. So it's called a Myers cocktail. We have nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide, or NAD. He's sitting on a PEMF mat, pulse electromagnetic field mat. And then we're going to do photomodulation or red and near infrared light therapy. This one's a bright one. You want to get your glasses on. With these resources, with this regiment, you know, taking care of myself, having a healthy lifestyle, you know, I feel like there's there's still a lot left in the tank for me in the, in the sport of boxing. My goal is to make sure people, when they see me fight, they say, you know, Jose, he's a fighter that leaves, he leaves it all in the ring. And now it's really time to really get back in the top and get my belts back. And I feel like I have the skills, the mindset, the team to get that done. So 2023, uh, it's going to be a big year. You're seeing him. Absolutely. Be safe out there, all right? This was my, always been my dream car. Uh, this specific model. And I, I remember being in junior high, sitting with my buddy. My buddy brings a, cal a calendar to school and we start talking about cars. And, and I looked at this Ferrari and it was silver with red interior. And I'm like, man, if I ever one day make enough money to purchase a car, it would be this car. Well, I got this car in 2019, but I got it just to tell myself how, you know, you know, the dreams could come true when you really work hard. Did you, you never bring your hat wraps so. <laughs> It's super cool hanging out with her. It's basically somebody to look up to, a good example and stuff. It feels great to be able to be that person that people can can watch and look up to and, and see that you can you can achieve anything you put your mind to. You can accomplish your dreams no matter where you come from. So you're gonna so you gonna so what you gonna do? You're gonna go. You're gonna go your hair like this. You're gonna go. Bah, 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 and then you come over. So bah, bah, bah. Make a snap. Turn. I didn't really understand that it was such a big deal to be a female fighter from East LA who is living her dreams. It, it just, it seemed strange and odd to a lot of people because they're not used to seeing that. I mean, I always had that confidence in me. I, I knew, I knew that, I knew that I was very good. I knew it and I knew that I could continue to improve and be even better. I knew that I was different from any other female fighter out there. It was a struggle. It was a struggle to get where I'm at today. But I think that I really changed the minds of so many people. I feel like I have not even 
accomplished half of the things that I want to accomplish. Maybe at the end of my career when I'm undisputed in three different weight divisions and I'm pound for pound number one. But for now, it's just, it's all about hard work. Looking at this view brings so many memories. Growing up, my mom having Dodger Stadium as her second job. Dodger Stadium is definitely a big part of my childhood. So running here just brings back so many memories and I started running here at Elysian Park when I was eight years old. It just brings back so many memories just looking at the view of the city that I was born and raised in. I love to, to inspire people and let, and let them know that you can have these bigger dreams. I didn't see myself staying stuck in the neighborhood, staying stuck in the hood. Like I, I already knew in my mind all the things that I was gonna accomplish at such a young age and I, I knew that I would be where I'm at today. With these young champions, and the way they represent themselves, it can only inspire other young kids out there who look like them, who come from neighborhoods like them, to, to want to get into it. It has a bright future, and I'm excited to continue to witness it. I believe the atmosphere at the Seymour Center, March 25th, will make people's heart vibrate. Jose Ramirez comes in among his people. The excitement, the shouting, on March 25th, I'm representing everyone out there who is Mexican and Mexican-American. And here she is, super bad. Every time I step into the ring, I carry that pride and heart with me. <laughs> it's going to be so much fun. They're on their feet, the hometown kid looking to close it out. Fighters are excited to come to Fresno because of the atmosphere that the fans bring. So many people cheering for Jose Ramirez. It's different than anywhere else. It's like a huge family. He loves to give the fans the best part of the night. Sinise is going to accomplish everything that she wants to accomplish. I know I'm the best, and I want to prove that. The skill level of these ladies has dramatically gone beyond what it used to be. I can only see victory. You know, she's got this fighting heart. My goal is to become a world champion again. He wants to be remembered as a warrior. I love young Mexican fighters. Round one starts, they start punching. <laughs>